Hello, I am Maximion and in this video I will show you how to use my baseline corrector to correct the baseline distortion of 1D solid state NMR spectra. My baseline corrector can be called through topspin by the command mybc. This command is a Python script that you should have downloaded at the same time as baseline corrector. Here is the main windows. You have here in blue the original spectrum and here in red the applied baseline to correct the spectrum. You can see that the software uh, automatically retrieves the dead time value and the dwell time value. Based on these two values it computes the number of truncated points. This number of points correspond to the time domain zone which has not been acquired due to the dead time in between the end of the excitation period and the acquisition. You have the possibility to change this value and to check if it's the good one, you can look at this figure. Here you see the inverse Fourier transform of the real part of the spectrum. This plot looks like an echo except that you have, in the middle here, a zone of very low intensity which corresponds to the equivalent dead time. Here, the number of points is correct because the points uh, in between these two red lines have very few intensity. So we will use this value. If you let the truncation limit uh, checked, then the baseline that you compute will be expressed in the time domain only during this equivalent dead time, which means that the point of the FID which has been acquired will not be modified. You should usually start with a simple sinus cardinal fit, which I will do here. This fit should allow you to correct the major uh, distortion of the baseline. After this, you see that only one sinus cardinal fit is not enough to correct the whole baseline, which makes sense because the baseline distortion just due to time domain truncation is a full integral of a sinus cardinal. That's why you want to use this uh, iterative smoothing spline algorithm which will allow you to get the perfect baseline. Okay, once you reach the stopping criterion, the fit stop and you get your baseline, which is here quite okay and preserve the feature of the spectrum. If you're not happy with the baseline, then you have the possibility to use a manual modification of the point of the baseline. Here you have all of this uh, yellow point that you can move to modify the baseline. As you can see the baseline doesn't exactly pass through this uh, point because you're still in the truncation limit so anyway the red line is only expressed in the time domain during the equivalent dead time which is here only 34 points. If you're now okay with the baseline you can apply and simply press the button save one air file and then go back to top spin. When you go back to top spin you just have to drag and drop the spectrum again and you get the corrected version you can still uh, phase the spectrum like this with zero or one phase order even if as the baseline correction algorithm is optimized to correct a perfectly phased in absorption mode spectrum so what i would recommend is to find the good phase if it was a uh, too difficult to find without a baseline correction and then 
do the Fourier transform again with FP, with the phase, and then correct again the spectrum. Okay, in this case, uh, we have been able to use the time limit truncation to correct the spectrum because the baseline was only due to time domain truncation. This is not always the case. More important baseline uh, distortion can arise for a wide variety of reasons, such as burst ringing. You can still correct your baseline with my VC in such a case, but you won't use the time domain truncation limit. So this is what happened here. I will uncheck the truncation limit and still start by applying a cardinal sinus fit. This correct the most important distortion as the baseline and I can employ the smoothing spline fit. However, in the case in which I unlock this truncation limit, the smoothing of the smoothing spline fit is uh, only uh, due to this number, which is the p-value, which is used as a smoothing factor. So when the fit uh, reach a stationary point, you can just stop it like this, and here you obtain the baseline. This is not too bad. Okay, now I want to see what happens if I use a bad value of this. And you need to play a bit. The default value won't be the good one every time. Let's have a look. If I decrease a lot the smoothing factor, then you will see that the baseline start to hit the peak. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is not good because you lose signal intensity over there. Let's try now to use a very big value, such as 12, and perform the smoothing split fit again. And here you see that the value is too important. The fit is too smooth and cannot succeed to correct the baseline. That's why you end up with this. So maybe 10 was an okay value, maybe you can try with 10.5. This is not too bad, even if the fit takes a bit longer. In any case, baseline corrector is just a tool which helps you to perform the baseline correction. The result and the baseline interpretation is up to you. So this is the same. Once you're happy with your baseline, you can just save the 1R file and then go back to topspin. Thank you for listening.